I'm Lizzie. And I'm Izzy. And we need help. Each week, we stumble through a new book, method, or concept that brings us one step closer to being our best self. Yes, we make fun of ourselves. And others. But mostly just ourselves. So here's to not taking self-help quite so seriously. Welcome to We Need Help. I'm Lizzie. And I'm Izzy. And this week, we need to take control of what goes into our bodies. Yes, Yay. we do. No Yay. No dirty dicks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> just just say no. Just say. Mm. <laughs> okay. So we are talking about uh, what healthy food we can put into our bodies today because uh, we recently ran across the American Crisis Roundtable. It's a almost four hour event that happened that uh, RFK uh, kind of made happen, I believe. And um, I wanted to just have a quick talk about what happens to um, us when we get overwhelmed with this subject and how we can kind of simplify it without arguing about politics, without uh, getting caught up in the details and just making some major changes for our family without becoming overwhelmed. Yeah. Where did, like, how did you become interested in this? I mean, I think you've always been interested in this because you've always been like clean eating, healthy eating, but like what sparked the sudden? Well, not always. I mean, <laughs> I used to destroy myself on a daily basis, but uh, since I've been feeding my child, uh, mm. Scarlett, I have been an advocate for uh, healthy eating. And so um, and I'm the weird one in the group. I know this. And I think it's time for us all to get weird. What do you mean you're the weird one in the group? Like none of your friends are like, what do you, yeah, what does that mean? Now, my friends, I've surrounded myself with the same kind of weirdos. But when you're uh, 13, yeah, 13 years ago, when I was talking about gut health and stuff like that, people were like, oh my God, here she goes with gut health again, or here she goes with this, that, and the other thing. But I have kind of simplified it down to a couple of different things that you can change about your life that doesn't mean breaking the bank and doesn't mean an exuberant amount of time that you can put into or have to put into it to get some major change in your life. Because, you know, just to talk about a few things, you know, we can no longer, and I don't care what side of the, the aisle you're on, we can no longer trust our government to protect us. And that is it. That like, it's, it's, that's not our, our that's not an arguable point. We allow 10,000 uh, additives into our food where Europe, where you are, only allows 400 additives. I know it's so funny. Um, when I was, I was thinking about opening a steakhouse a few years ago and I wanted like an American steakhouse and I met with whatever the meat importers meat man here. And I'm like, I want to import some meat from the U S and they're like, there's only two places we can import from in the U S because everything else will not pass EU standards because there's so many additives. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It's, like I was it's shocked. really overwhelming. It's yeah. really overwhelming. So it's just we're at a we're at a crisis point because fertility is at an all time low. And, you know, for some of us that listen to this podcast, that's not a big deal until you look at it like you're not going to get grandchildren. You're not going to like you're the people, the children that you love will not get to love a child because and that's of a result of the additives in the food. That's a result of the additives. Um, we've got 25% of women on SSRIs, on like on drugs that are supposed to make you feel better. And, you know, I'm not a doctor and I don't pretend to be, but I've never met somebody on an SSRI that is actually happy. I haven't either. I'm trying, try, like, I had a, one of my coaches yesterday, like, she was talking to me and she's like, can you connect me with anyone that you know that's on antidepressants that's doing really well? 
And I really wanted to do it. And so actually I'm putting it out to our audience. If you are on antidepressants and you're doing great and you're super happy, please get in touch with us because we'd love to talk to you. But I really could not think of anybody. Yeah, I've I, my mom's been on them and she has always struggled with them. Yeah. And she wouldn't mind me saying so because she like, I mean, if there's a solution for her, you know, it just, it doesn't work, you guys. It's just not working. It's not, we're not doing stuff that is working. Uh, obesity is at an all-time high. They're talking about giving Ozempic to six-year-olds at this point because our population, our children are fat and unhealthy and unable to change that because the decisions that we're making at the grocery store, let's just say it what it is. That's That's yeah. what it is. Can I ask you though, um, cause in all fairness, like when I really try to eat healthy, it is more expensive. Like, well, I, and I'm going to give some solutions to yeah. that. And oh, I yes, it that. is. It yeah. is slightly more expensive. Um, but, but there are, you're putting up money for good food, but then you're saving on healthcare. So that is the, that's the reality of it. Yeah. That is like, that's as serious as it, as it gets. Um, ADD, ADHD, autism, metabolic disease, such as like type two and three diabetes. We, we renamed type three di or we, we didn't acknowledge the fact that, you know, Alzheimer's or, uh, dementia, excuse me, dementia is a result of what we're eating. It's proven. And like, if this doesn't piss anybody off, then you haven't dealt with it. But when you do watching your loved one die 10 years before they die is devastating. Yeah. Parkinson's. I mean, this just goes on and on and on and a, just a general unhappiness in our population. Yeah. And it's proven that, I mean, I don't like, if you do science, that's fine. If you don't, if you're just like, you want to ignore it, it, the proof's in the pudding as well. Yeah. You know, we're just an unhappy like population right now. Yeah. Children and are shooting up schools. Yeah. And we're not like ready to make a decision to change what we're doing. And I'm, I'm sorry to get fired up about this, but I just don't understand at what point are we going to stop being the victim of our own choices? Mm. Yeah. That's what this is because the information is out there. And if you choose not to look at it, you're part of the problem. And yeah. the fact of the matter is, is the government isn't going to fix it for us. The only thing that we can do is vote with our dollar. Mm. And when we vote with our dollar, these people are going to go away because they don't do anything that doesn't make money. Yeah. So i wanted to <laughs> you're so funny because you're like this isn't going to be political <laughs> it's not going to be political <laughs> well it's not political because they're yeah. both they're both guilty yeah all sides are guilty but most of all we're guilty because we've let this happen we've seen every we've seen and we've villainized the word fat we're not allowed to say it anymore right like, you can't fucking say fat now right now i i i from a kindness standpoint, I would never call someone that. But the fact of the matter is, is we have a fat problem. We have a nutritional problem. We have a mental health problem. And it's something's got to change. And all and the scientists are saying there are people out there that are saying that they're if you watch that American Crisis Roundtable, they are screaming it into our ears and we're choosing not to listen. Yeah. Can you share it on our, on our, um, yeah, story? I can, but I'm, I'm frankly afraid because it doesn't get seen when mm. you put it on, like I shared it on my, uh, Facebook and it just didn't get, seen. I didn't see it. Yeah. I didn't see it. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. You so sent it to me and then I, I sent it directly to you. And, yeah. and I will say, I've talked to a lot of people and said, Hey, did you watch that? Well, I just don't have time to watch four hours. I'm sorry. Did you watch the latest Kristen Bell uh, thing on Netflix? You, but you don't have four hours to watch about yeah. what is happening to us, what is being done in our country to our children. Yeah, it's just it's bizarre. 
So what but, are you like, what are some of your suggestions? Because this is obviously a problem, but like someone who's <laughs> super overwhelmed with work, bunch of kids, you know, like what to do, how to do it. Okay. So you can make a few changes. One, start making choices of things in the grocery store that have no dyes in them. No, no dye. red dyes, no, no dyes at all. Uh, there are plenty of companies out there that have taken to coloring food with vegetables. And that is just, mm. I mean, if we're just too, you know, simple uh, to eat something that's not a certain color, if your children just can't handle it yet, then go for vegetable dyes. Okay. But no dyes in in your foods. It just what read are, the label. What are some foods that have dyes? I don't even know. Because I, I don't think Poland, I'm trying to think if Poland has dyes and I can't, I don't, I don't recall, but probably, but I don't, I don't know. Now I'm going to be looking. But what types of food yeah. have dyes? I can't tell you how many people have gone to Europe and been like, I wasn't sick at all. I wasn't I, like- my mentor, her daughter, they travel back and forth between the states. Every time her daughter's in the U.S., breaks out, horrible acne, comes back to Poland, a few weeks, it's gone. Her skin's yeah, clear. It's okay. Seriously, yeah. we went to France. We ate everything known yeah. to man. Never had any blow, nothing. No. So, no dyes in your food. No dyes. Eliminate seed oils. No seed oils no seed oils and no canola oil. What's wrong with it's, those? They are, they, they wreak havoc. And I don't want to give too much of a medical like description, but they're yeah, cancer just, causing. Just alignment. They, alignment yeah. Just the seed oils do your own research, but they are terrible for the body. Okay. Eliminate high fructose corn syrup and learn what the different names of those are. Okay. You're going to have to change the names. I, I know. Yeah. They change. I'm sure the companies are tricky. They're like, let's just rebrand it. To, I mean, let's be realistic. In the eighties, the, the food companies were bought by the cigarette companies and they took all of their scientists and with, from cigarettes and made them into food scientists and how to make it, how to make our food as addictive as possible. That's insane. And yeah, they're really tricky. And, you know, we could go into that. We could, we could fight that and get mad about it, but we could also just change what we buy and that would build the companies that are doing it right and eliminate the companies that are doing it wrong. Okay. So no high fructose corn syrup, no dyes, no seed oils. Got it. A good, a good thing when looking at the label is if it has ingredients that you can make it in your own kitchen if it has things that you can understand and you have in your own kitchen or could buy, then that is probably a safe thing. You know, yeah. if you, if it has something that you can't pronounce or read, or like, or a can't, number, like eight, two, three, 45, is probably <laughs> <good>. <laughs> then it's just not like if you, there, there are a million things you could look it up. Like any, if, and you can, I mean, it's just stuff that you can't pronounce. If it has that on there, you should not buy it. Okay. And that's a really good way of of coming up with what you should buy. So if you okay. look on the label and you're like, okay, it has flour, I can get flour. Has butter, I can get butter. Has this, you know, or whatever, Spices, not butter, yeah, but yeah. cream, you know, um, then you should buy, you can buy it. But if it doesn't have things that you could attain yourself, then and you don't have any clue what the hell it is yeah. and even if you did it's a chemical just don't buy it hey guys remember to go to we need help the podcast for all different kinds of stuff like our swag you can find the episodes you can find the books that we're focusing on all the methodologies uh please go to we need help the podcast today and enjoy the rest of the episode so Knowing that if you could make it yourself in your own kitchen, then that processed food is better than the alternative. Okay. But if you can eliminate processed foods in general, that would be lovely. Okay. But I know that that's really hard, especially in America. 
It really is. I, oh my gosh, it's so hard because, so I live here in Warsaw and whenever I go to the U S I get, I'm like so attracted to the ready-made meals because they're like there and they look so, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, there's so much of it too. And it's packaged so nicely and it's so enticing, you know? Right. Um, So yeah, it's, and there's so much more of it. Yeah. And everybody's friends have it. And I want that. I want this. And, you know, it, it really is an industry that is fueled by, you know, kind of almost like a, a, a social experiment, but like if, if I had fruit or if I wanted fruit roll-ups when I was a kid, I can guarantee kids are still feeling like that. Yeah. How about, let's go back a little bit. I'm interested in how you guys ate when you were a kid. Like, what so was my that? mom, my mom was a, a real pioneer. Yeah. Um, she made all my, she made all my baby food. Mm-hmm. And in the late seventies, that was very weird. Yeah. Um. She, now when my sister came along, she, bought the stuff. So I got a lot healthier, you know, start than my sister and my sister's immune system is not as good as mine. Yeah. He has a lot more intolerances than I do. Interesting. But my mom, we were poor. And back then the processed foods were more expensive. It's the opposite. Yeah. It's opposite now. So my mom always had a garden. My mom always made, uh, you know, meat and veg at night. We always had a meat and we had a veg. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it was, I hated it because all of my friends were getting Doritos and Velveeta shells and cheese. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on white bread. We had that. Yeah. Yeah. We had that. I mean, we didn't, (laughs) but it wasn't. The peanut butter and jelly of then was not the, is not the peanut butter and jelly of today. It really, that's what we have to understand. Like we ate it. Well, that's not the same food as our children are eating today. Even the McDonald's, like I remember um, getting chicken nuggets when I was a kid and you kind of, it's like a crapshoot and you're kind of hoping, I was always hoping for like the white meat ones, but they were like actual meat. Like you can get the chunks. Like, and I remember the chicken nuggets, like, of then we're like, there was a variety, like of, you could see it was chunks of chicken and now it's all just like smooth white meat, which is, yeah, it's weird. Know. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. And nobody wants to talk about it, but like, we have to stop. We have to stop. Yeah. I mean, what we are doing to our children is considered abuse. Yeah. And I hate saying that because it's it, but I mean, if you are choosing to look away from this, you're choosing to make your child sick Mm. and you're choosing that your child might have fertility issues. Sperm counts are down. You guys like this is scary, you know, and robbing your child of a life that you that's worse or that's robbing your child of the quality of life that you even have is the worst thing you can do as a parent, in my opinion. Uh, you know, eating a, a rainbow of of foods. I've always said, you know, if you look at a plate and it's got all the colors on it, you know, it is, that's an easy way to say you're getting a round diet, you know, a yeah, well- like naturally, round, naturally yes. colorful. Not, yeah, not red not dye for Not colorful. <laughs> not, not a plate of Skittles. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. Um, and then, you know- making the decision not to, or if you have two choices say you're buying zucchini we'll just say or or cucumbers because for some reason now they're putting condoms on our cucumbers i don't get it have you seen these plastic wrap cucumbers we have those okay so if you have that decision and a cucumber that's not wrapped get the uncondomed cucumber okay the because unwrapped. that's going to the unwrapped because it has the other one is wrapped in plastic. That is just a decision and plastic and oddly in our bodies are not what not good. They say 0.05% of our brains are have plastic. That's gross. Are plastic now. 
Yes, I know. It's like a forever chemical. We have to stop. And I think that, remember when uh, Tylenol had somebody poisoned Tylenol years ago? It was in Chicago, I think, or like a suburb. They put um, cyanide in the Tylenol. Okay. So after that, they started to like lock up everything and everybody got scared and we wanted everything to be in plastic and wrapped and made sure it wasn't tainted by somebody. Yeah, that nobody has peer- put poison in this cucumber. Exactly. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that made us all get poisoned. Yeah. I truly believe that that was like, like a Twilight a- Zone episode. That's like the most horrific, like... <laughs> it won't stop. Yeah. Um. So, you know, a, a few things that I did here, here you know, and... This started in St. Thomas more than here, but uh, I have a co-op in my house and everybody can do this. And I have um, sourdough that's delivered for me and about 10 of other households. So uh, a girl, uh, her name, or she's Sunshine Sourdough. She gets her flour from Italy. So it's not sprayed with bullshit. And so she delivers sourdough bread to the house. I have uh, Nikki, my egg lady. She delivers duck and chicken eggs that are feed fed organically. Yeah. And live a wonderful, happy life where they're not in getting, you know, abused. Um, I have a did micro you know what Norway did, by the way, with the chickens. No. That they offered every family in Norway was offered three chickens by the Norwegian government. And <laughs> you could just have the three chickens and if you want to. Okay. And many families took in the chickens and it like reduced the egg production from these big chicken farms by like X amount. And it's almost yeah. actually been eliminated. And it's amazing. Yeah. See, these are the things that can happen. Yeah. So we have Nikki, our uh, my egg lady delivers those. We have Justini's Greenies. They, she delivers oh. microgreens. I know it's so cute. Um, yep. And then we have the plantation or plantatious girl. She delivers greens and I'm looking for a meat person and I'm looking for a honey person Yeah. Uh, right now. And then I think we'll move on to dairy. But anyway, you can have, if you have somebody that has a outdoor refrigerator or is willing to do it, uh, can you can get a co-op going in your neighborhood or with your closest friends and just use local farmers that you can audit and th- have that food delivered there. And that takes it out of the hands of anybody that it just eliminates all the middlemen. And this is where we're having the problem is the middlemen. Yeah. You know, when you just trust anybody to make your food, and anybody to make your greens and anybody to do whatever, they're they have a chance to do a a, a unmoral thing or a convenient thing to your food that isn't good for your family. Um, if yeah, you we're... are able to, if you're able to get a herb garden going, if you're able to garden at all, you know, just yeah. these little things that you can control. And then, like, let's just break it down. Real food. If you just buy real food, and the way to get that cheaper is to buy in bulk. And, you know, with my people in the North who don't have access to farmers that are working year round, you know, frozen veg. I mean, it is. Or pickle it, but that does take some of the nutrients out that you know, our a major problem is that we lack nutrition in our food right now. Yeah. You know, the, our kids' brains aren't working well because we're, you know, processing the foods. I'm, pickling is better than anything. And I know you Polish people love pickling, right? Love a good pickle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sauerkraut's our middle name. Oh, yeah. Well, and I do want to say if you can get fermented veg it is so good for your gut gut health bubby's pickles makes a great fermented pickle you know and but they are expensive you can do it at home for super cheap but that takes time Pickles at home it's super easy i do yeah countryside we live in the like when we live in the countryside 
we get our eggs there. We get our cheeses there. We have a, we have a place where we go get our meat. Mm-hmm. Um, everything is, you know, grown there. So it's, it's wonderful. That is just, that's a number one thing is to get your shit local because you can audit those people yeah. and they want to be, they're proud of what they're making. Yeah. This is not, this is not like, I'm not fighting the farmer. The farmer yeah. is, you know, uh, frankly, the farmer is the key to fixing this problem. Yeah. You know, well, actually the key is to getting or uh, accepting that we are ignorant and need to do something better for our families and taking yeah. responsibility. I mean, we're the right now we're like, oh, you know, we're just this, that, and the other thing. We're, we're, we're fat. Americans are fat. No, we're making the decisions, you know, and that's, I mean, and I, I want to, backtrack on my judgment because there are some really poor communities and they are really unable to get a lot of this stuff. And that is our problem as well. But we have to start building up the, you know, proper practices aren't going to become affordable until the ones that can afford to back them up by buying from them, make them big enough. Yeah. I mean, that is just, we have to do something. And um, and then also one more thing, just focusing and learning about gut health because gut health is, I believe, the uh, our microbiome is our gateway to our, our being able to think properly and get, uh, you know, we're, we're being our, with, when we, uh, I get so like irritated with this and, and have so much information in my mind, but our gut health is poisoning our bodies. If it's not, um, health, uh, on a healthy, in a healthy spot and ours as a country and as probably as all society, but in the United States is dismal. Yeah. And we have to learn about it. You have to go get the information yourself. It's not going to be spoon fed to you, pun intended. Yeah, it's interesting. I've never, like here in Poland, I've never seen anyone have one of those carts that they ride in um, Mm. at the grocery stores. You see the people because they can't walk anymore. Like, I haven't seen one in Poland. It's really interesting. Like, it's just, but it's coming here, which is that's what I'm afraid of. Like I see well, grocery stores changing and I see it changing. Well, we like to think that this is a U.S. problem. It's not. No, it's coming over. It's filtering. You know, it's it's yeah. This Europe likes to be westernized. Right. So I'm hoping. That it's not going to come over like <laughs> as strongly as, you know, but I see it slowly filtering, you know, well, like, and you have I to, first you moved have, here. You have the opportunity. Yeah. You have the opportunity to rage against the machine. Yeah. Because you've seen the example of what it's yeah. done to our society. Yeah. When I moved here, there was no Doritos. There was like, you had to go to the specialty American store, or you can go to the U.S. Embassy and they had an American store and they had like Doritos and Dr. Pepper and like they had those things, but you couldn't get them. You just couldn't. There was, they, we had like our Polish version, but they were like not as, you know, processed or whatever. So, but now it's all over. So, well, and let me reality check you here. Those foods that are being sent to Europe uh, by Coke and and Doritos and and General Mills, they all have healthier ingredients in them because the the European governments will not allow these chemicals that are in the U.S. into their population. They won't let them. It's scary. We already have... We already have, so we go to, Scarlett and I go to World Market and we'll find, uh, you know, because it tells you where it's from and we've we've gone and compared. She's like, she's so educated. Educate your children yeah. too. When you're educating yourself, educate your children. Yeah. But we'll look at the different ingredients lists and it's insane what, how long the list is for the American versus the French or the yeah. Japanese or, you know, it's, it, you know, it's not, 
really that hard, but you have to set down that beautiful ignorance that we're all comfortable with. And, and it is like, it's our ego holding on to it. Like we don't want to, we don't want to be the ones to say, holy shit, we've been poisoning our children. Yeah. Holy shit. We've been poisoning our kids. Like we don't want to say that, but that's what we've been doing. And I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm not freaking self-righteous here. I have given my child red dye. I have given her Skittles. Yeah. You know, I have, I have done these things, you know, they are special treats, you know, but I'm getting to the point where I'm, I'm just not even allowing them in the house mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. I mean, I am the gatekeeper. Yeah. Like the government is not the gatekeeper. I am the no, gatekeeper. No, you are. And I remember, I remember growing up, we had none of that shit in the house. And I remember begging my mom and she was like, no, she stood firm. Like, I love that. Our desserts, my grandmother would make, she would take cranberries and she would make like a cranberry sauce with like a little bit of sugar and honey. And like, that would be our dessert with a little bit of whipped cream. And she would make the whipped cream herself. Which and is, that was it. Like we, it we doesn't take candy. long. We didn't have chips. We didn't have that stuff. It was just like, we no. didn't have it. The only time I had it was when I would go to my American neighbors and that was it. Oh. We, we just didn't have it. So it is possible for parents to put down those boundaries. Cause I, I had those boundaries. Well, and my mom, my mom always said, just, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. Yeah, so I, I would go over to my friend, Brandy Biddles and she had Brandy all Biddles. the good stuff and yeah. she had in she had all the Barbies and it was yeah. like, oh, I couldn't yeah, wait to I, get over there. Yeah. I had the same friend, Kelly, Kelly Martin. And I remember <laughs> also like Halloween for us was so special because it was the I one know. time a year where we could eat candy. Like, oh my God. So I know. Special. Now I'm like, is Halloween even special? Because they get that shit every day. I think kids, you know, some kids do. And, and it's easy to do. And like, we have to also yeah. Like with taking responsibility, understand that we only know what we know yeah. and we have today, we don't have yesterday and we have, we can move, look forward to tomorrow and just make better choices and educated choices. And we all have the internet. It's not like you back when, uh, back then where you had, you had the encyclopedia Britannica for your information, <laughs> you know? You know that my mom, when she moved here from Florida, she had, she gave me like 20 boxes. I'm like, what is this? She goes, it's, <laughs> it's, this, and she gave me the like set of encyclopedia. For <laughs> <laughs> you should keep it. It's on my shelf. Uh, so I love it. I am like, I can't, like I look through it. It's interesting. Well, I, I really you know, like I said, we have, we have it at our fingertips. Yeah. We have these things, you know, and as parents and as people, we have to start making better decisions or, I mean, the, it's a grim reality. What yeah. is going to happen going forward? It's grim. I mean, this is a now thing. Yeah. So uh, please reach out if you need any clarity or, um, you know, do your own research. I would highly recommend to anybody uh, to watch that American Crisis Roundtable uh, that RFK did. Uh, I don't care what side you're on. I uh, the, Politics are irrelevant. These are smoke and mirrors for us, guys. This, yeah. this politics is smoke and mirrors. This is how they're getting us against each other. We need to be for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. In this. Amen. So thank yeah. you. Really important. Oh, you're so good. <laughs> I love I you. I love you. <laughs> See you next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us this week on We Need to Help the Podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, like again, our YouTube channel, our Instagram, follow us wherever you can. It really, really helps us out and ensures that you won't miss any future episodes. So yep. Thanks to you. We can keep going. We'll see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. Love you. Bye. Bye.